Welcome back. Well, on this program, we endeavour to brighten up business, make it a bit more entertaining, humorous even. Well, let me tell you, it's not easy. Someone who should know is comedian Rodney Marks, who's been entertaining business for the past 30 years, and now his two sons, Benjamin and Joshua, have followed him into the family business. They're with me here in the studio tonight. Welcome to you all. Thank you, Rodney, I'm going to start with you. You started doing this in 1979. Just give me an idea of the type of thing, because a lot of our viewers have probably seen you at events, but they mightn't recognise you, might they? Uh, mostly it's comic hoaxes, certainly since uh, 1991. I'm a corporate imposter, so I turn up as someone very important, which of course I'm not. So the managing director, the, the new owner, a senator, a judge, a psychiatrist, someone from Pluto, um, yeah, I only... saw you recently <laughs> as someone from Pluto. We picked that wasn't right. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was an international audience. We didn't want to offend anybody. <laughs> if I was German, if I was American, if I was English, New Zealander, South American, South African, someone would be offended. So, yeah, it's that was... the last safe area. Yeah, Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was going to ask you this, the corporate hoax thing. Now, I remember, I mean, I've been around about same time as you. Um, it was big for a while there, but Australia is such a small market. I was surprised to see you still doing it. I thought you might have had to stop it for a while that everybody would know, sorry about that, would know who you it. are. Um, you know, that there might, it might be, you know, hard or is there always a new audience coming in? There, there are new audiences, but people enjoy it even if they've, even if, you know, 5% of the audience may have seen you somewhere else. They enjoy feeling in the know. Uh, and sometimes uh, th they uh, aid my character without me soliciting it's that support. It's the same as in politics, you know, people can make the same promises and again and again and people fall for it each time. So <laughs> it's, it's all... It, yeah, it's they all like hearing the same thing over and over again. And sometimes people do get fooled the same year after year after year. I, I did a bank four years in a row, the same conference, and I appeared once as uh, an Afro-American, once as um, a white uh, a, a Canadian, I think, once as a German and once as a, a female character. Now, you've just confirmed my view of Mancus. Four goes and they didn't pick it up. It took them that long. Yeah, it was kind of a dare and, <laughs> and they would guess the wrong person was the Im imposter. Oh, my goodness. That was fun. I must say... Um, that bank has since been taken over. Ah, oh, right, OK, we're narrowing it down. I don't think the others are much better, to be honest. Um, Benjamin, I'll ask you. Now, your card reads economics.org. It says, it has a quote, Life is dismal for those who ignore economics. Could you tell us what you're doing? I, uh, I'm a comedy writer, so I, uh, I uh, mostly work for professional speakers, adding humour to serious speakers who'd speak on work-life balance or whatever. But uh, on the side, I uh, have various ventures. One of them is economics.org.au, and uh, that's being funny and serious at exactly the same time. I mean, I guess Joshua and I have a different uh, business structure to dad, he's uh, you know he has responsibilities. You know he's got to work to to uh, to, to <laughs> feed his family. Whereas Joshua and I, we can pick and choose our projects because we have inherited wealth. So <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, okay, Joshua, yeah. tell me what you're doing to continue the family I, uh, business. Well, it's it's quite a good partnership actually. I film uh, you know 15 second to 10 minute funny films where dad will be the star, and using some of uh, Benjamin's material will go around interviewing people and it would be sort of a big a bigger part of dad's hoax before his keynote event and then it'll be shown later in the later in the conference as sort of part of the reveal so uh, tell uh, me what guys what do you remember about your earliest memories about being involved in the business i remember once once he uh, when i was very young he came home late at night knocked on the door and our mother his wife screamed and he was all dressed in black, you know, black makeup and everything. You know, it was like one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it was good but it's you were involved in the act at an early age, I yeah, guess. The boy in the box. We're often, uh, Joshua did it quite a bit. He was the straight man, so we'd say a word so or something. Like, yes, no, and maybe. I have to remember <laughs> the order, that's all I have to do. <laughs> questions. And, yeah. uh, you know, Dad'll say, What do you think of the economic future of. Australia and where are we going from here? And I'd say yes, and then everyone would laugh. I get the I get the punchline, and then I'll do all the work, which is a pretty good deal. Now, look, what I want to ask you, as I said in the outset, I mean, you know, we try and entertain here. 
Let's be frank. I mean, it's damn hard to get uh, business to laugh a lot. Uh, their, their sense of humour, in a lot of cases, is not terrific. How hard is it? It's harder to get them to take you seriously. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I find. What when you present the check, the invoice? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's the partial. Aspect. But it's, it's hard to get people to laugh even at the Opera House. You know, we, tragically, we heard of, of, of Joan Sutherland's demise today, and and uh, you know, I took Benjamin to see Lucia de Lammermoor. And uh, yeah, she had a bit of a temper, as, as I recall. <laughs> Is that right, Benjamin? Yeah, there's the. Yeah, she, yeah, she's a brilliant voice, but you know, when you when you try singing along, yeah. no, good. no good. <laughs> um, but I, I do wonder. I mean, you must. That was call... a joke, by the way. Oh, sorry. It was a joke. It wasn't well, real. Laugh. That was excellent. It was excellent. <laughs> yeah, I know. Look, it's a bit hard. You see, <laughs> I'm not helping you on. Let's try again. Tell me your hardest, apart from tonight, what's been your hardest audience or ones that where it didn't quite work or, um, I mean, because you have some ambitious hoaxes. Well, Did they we're go told to sack the entire staff. Yeah, what that about, what about, about we tell one risky one and one, one recent fun one? The, okay. The risky one was... Um, and then let the audience decide which is which. <laughs> dial this. Uh, many years ago, in the early 90s, I... I um, was brought into. Am I allowed to mention companies' names? Or? Absolutely. Oh, it's a business uh, show. Yeah, <laughs> a, a, a wonderful company called Pioneer, um, and and uh, one of their offshoots, uh, building materials, uh, new brick, uh, tiles and pavers, and perhaps some of your audience were uh, were there. How many people watch this show, by the way? No, I don't know. Is oh, that a joke? On. No, no <laughs> it's only half. Well, there were, yeah, only half. There, there were there were 500 people in this audience, and it was the '91 recession in Victoria, and times were tough, and and so I I, I had to let them all go. I played the MBA jerk from head office with lots of buzzwords and so I on. I heard about this one. And uh, and so it it was meant to. Um, overcome their um, their feeling that they were going to be sacked. The, the idea was that if you can sack them, and then it's a joke, then um, absenteeism and, and uh, um, various other um, bits of evidence about poor morale and poor productivity would go away. But it took a very long time for them to realise it was a, a joke, and they uh, had four heroic guys in the audience stand up whilst, whilst this was still on the table, as it were, and uh, the, the first guy said, I know what you're talking about, the $30,000 that went missing. I said, oh, no, it's not that. It's very interesting. Uh, we found the guy who did it. We sacked him. We should have reported the police. No, no, it wasn't him. And the next guy says, uh, um, maybe I've got it out of sequence anyway. One of the guys said, oh, you're talking about the Indonesian partnership that fell apart. You know, you told us to do international work. No, no, it wasn't that. Oh, uh, is it the market share, you know, uh, uh, profitability ratio that's, that's gone? Uh, you know, we've, got, we've grown market share. Profitability's gone down. When the recession lifts, we'll be sitting pre pretty. No, it's not that. And then the state sales manager, I was appointed by the advertising department at this stage there, you know, um, and, uh, which was a, a pity really, because I'm looking to them for saying, yeah, you're on the right path. But it, um, he said, do you mean to tell me that although we've got our, whatever it is, economic house in order, although we've done the, the export marketing, and that although we've um, uh, got the right market share ratio, and then it sort of, you know, light goes on and he said, oh, darn, or words to that effect. And my re recollection is that, that 50 tables of 10, 500 people, stood up and, and were yelling at each other across the table, not angry with me, not angry with anyone. It was like a, a, an emotional catharsis, which is the best sort of catharsis to have. Um, and they say, oh, I knew all along, you got you, yada, yada, yada. And it really did improve morale. morale. Well, I was going to ask you what it was like during um, tough times. We've just been through another terrible yeah, recession. Yeah, was, yeah. That, was that difficult for all of you? People sometimes you are funnier than you are because people need to laugh you know that's that's kind of weird you feel that you're doing some sort of therapy and sometimes you're not as funny as you are <laughs> <laughs> and that's <laughs> yeah but it, did it, you find um uh, people were looking for a sense of humor or they didn't there were a lot of things that the during the gfc there was a feeling they that seemed to think there were more important things often yeah, to like worry about the laughing so you so you were a it's luxury a, jokes are a much safer investment than <laughs> most of what uh, people well, good should, for your help. <laughs> I should tell you about one that we did that was more straightforward uh, earlier this year for a, a logistics conference and um, just that week the the Israelis I'll had uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the Israelis had 
assassinated. Allegedly. Uh, allegedly assassinated an alleged terrorist in Alleged. Dubai. Um, and so I thought, well, you know, there must be a logistics section of the Mossad. There, there, must be a, there, is, there must be a guy in charge. Why don't I be that guy and talk about, you know, the supply chain? So this is how you medicine. come up with your ideas. Something yeah, it has use, to be right? current. Okay. And it's also sort of scandalous and yeah. exciting and right. who wants to hear behind the scenes. And I like where so. you're going. What happened? So Benjamin and Joshua played my security. They played Mossad agents. Right. We got beefed up a bit for the <laughs> performance. Dressed in black, I played, uh, and all they would say was shalom and uh, move away from the window, general. <laughs> it was good. And say the prayer over bread. <laughs> and putting their fingers to their ears, so it was uh, uh, walkie talkie. It was just circumnavigating the building <laughs> like at massive distances. Your, your name was. Oh, my, oh, was General Chaim Zabos. So did they pick it up? What happened? No, what was the outcome? No. Oh, well, they were, they were outraged to say, you know, well, you know, it all started with a whiteboard and we have to get from here to here and, you know, the arrows. And, yeah, they, they got it eventually. Uh, what, and they what, were lovely, absolutely, absolutely what, lovely. Uh, what gave it away it was when they talked about nuclear weapons, as someone in the audience said. And uh, you said, you know, well, if that happens, we'll use nuclear weapons and boom. <laughs> <laughs> then they and they thought that was a bit... A a bit, bit Bit, bit cavalier uh, for a general. I was wondering, when, you, when you talked about having to write corporate speeches, trying to liven them up a bit, you mentioned work-life balance. My eyes glaze over and people still talk about it. How on earth do you liven up those speeches? Um, there's, uh, I mean, I get given all sorts of weird uh, things, but often I just add a huge amount of uh, material, different opening lines. I mean, they say they want to family friendly stuff so that means you can't talk about how families are formed so that limits <laughs> what we do um, but uh, often you know I'll have a joke and then I'll have saves so that'll turn it into self-deprecating humor and that's very safe because everyone can can I laugh at the that. speaker up there because that's an authority figure Joshua, I'm wondering about different generations. I mean, over the years, your father would have seen changes, but do you find younger people in business or your younger clients a different humour, or is it all pretty well the same, the different Oh, well, audience? the older people are the best. Uh, really? the, yeah, yeah. The, this, Don't hear that often. This, this, this generation is... Our, our generation, just a write-off, these guys are sort of... You yeah, guys are, are different. Older. You like the yeah, older. Yeah, I like... I like Two generations above me. They're they're the the what, most interesting people. they get the jokes people. better or well, better they're, sense they're, of humor? They're, 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 they're the ones that they can. In a nursing home. Yeah, no, but they're the ones that can get the, you know, the, the as Benjamin was saying, like funny and serious. It's like, you know, it, it can be tragic and funny at the same time. You know, they're um they're winding up. So that was he he's, he's has a particular um, interest in Australian variety, which was our vaudeville equivalent, and he's done a, a documentary about. A, a group of people in their 70s and 80s called the Echidnas. Uh, they're, they're, uh, the Australian Order of Comedians, where Dad is a member, and he likes to be there because he likes to see where he'll be in 30 years. And <laughs> it's nice to be the youngest somewhere. Well, actually, <laughs> now, speaking of the future, what trends do you see? I mean, you've been doing this for 30 years. You, you said at the outset there's still an audience for it. Nobody's... Obviously, even though you're showing your face today, they don't recognise you. But, but you assured me that no one watches no your show. One's, well, you know, I didn't actually say that. <laughs> that is not funny. <laughs> um, where do you see it going? Are you going to be doing the hoaxes for a long time? Or do you think they will wear thin eventually? Something different will have to come along? No, I don't think so. I think it's a very Australian genre. It undermines authority. Um, it gives people permission to question um, hierarchies, to question ideas that, that may or may not be good, but if they can be questioned and stand that test robustly, then that's a good thing. No, the people of all ages need to, uh, need to laugh, and I, I'm a great fan of uh, entertainers who, who fall over with their boots on. That's, good. that's well, my we're ambition. We're, on <laughs> we're all for right making, <laughs> making business lighter, and unfortunately we've run out of time. My thanks to Rodney. Benjamin and Joshua Marks. That's all we have time for tonight. Join me tomorrow night.